Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment or in an environmentally compatible way, and it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center was set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, international collaboration, but also educational development on public understanding of the project as well, and also networking so we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment or in an environmentally compatible way, and it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center was set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, international collaboration, but also educational development on public understanding of the project as well and also networking so we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. My name is Posey D and I now work in sports marketing and branding events and team management. We work with big brands, I work with a shoe company, and we work with a team of young people across Europe who are all professional surfers, snowboarders, boxers. And we send them on trips, we organize adverts, we organize magazine shoots, and try and create an image around the shoe brand. I've come from quite an unconventional background. I was a professional snowboarder myself for three or four years, full time, so I'm not used to sitting in an office, I'm not used to going to work every day. And still I've only been doing this job for a year, and sometimes I'm like oh god, have to go to work, again, that's ridiculous. But it's always different, so it's fine. And some weeks it's quite quiet, other weeks it's totally full on and really challenging. My name is Posey D and I now work in sports marketing and branding events and team management. We work with big brands, I work with a shoe company, and we work with a team of young people across Europe, who are all professional surfers, snowboarders, boxers. And we send them on trips, we organize adverts, we organize magazine shoots, and try and create an image around the shoe brand. I've come from quite an unconventional background. I was a professional snowboarder myself for three or four years, full time, so I'm not used to sitting in an office, I'm not used to going to work every day. And still I've only been doing this job for a year, and sometimes I'm like oh god, have to go to work, again, that's ridiculous. But it's always different, so it's fine. And some weeks it's quite quiet, other weeks it's totally full on and really challenging. For many years the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lucier, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted.
For many years, the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lucier, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. Emerald is defined by its green color. To be an emerald, a specimen must have a distinctly green color that falls in the range from bluish green to slightly yellowish green. To be an emerald, the specimen must also have a rich color. Stones with weak saturation or light tone should be called green barrel. If the barrel's color is greenish blue, then it is an aquamarine. If it is greenish yellow, it is heliodor. This color definition is a source of confusion. Which hue, tone, and saturation combinations are the dividing lines between green barrel and emerald? Professionals in the gem and jewelry trade can disagree on where the lines should be drawn. Some believe that the name emerald should be used when chromium is the cause of the green color, and that stones colored by vanadium should be called green barrel. Calling a gem an emerald instead of a green barrel can have a significant impact upon its price and marketability. This color confusion exists within the United States. In some other countries, any barrel with a green color no matter how faint is called an emerald. Emerald is defined by its green color. To be an emerald, a specimen must have a distinctly green color that falls in the range from bluish green to slightly yellowish green. To be an emerald, the specimen must also have a rich color. Stones with weak saturation or light tone should be called green barrel. If the barrel's color is greenish blue, then it is an aquamarine. If it is greenish yellow, it is heliodor. This color definition is a source of confusion. Which hue, tone, and saturation combinations are the dividing lines between green barrel and emerald? Professionals in the gem and jewelry trade can disagree on where the lines should be drawn. Some believe that the name emerald should be used when chromium is the cause of the green color, and that stones colored by vanadium should be called green barrel. Calling a gem an emerald instead of a green barrel can have a significant impact upon its price and marketability. This color confusion exists within the United States. In some other countries, any barrel with a green color no matter how faint is called an emerald. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start. I think it's often underestimated the connection between doing research, 
live research, and teaching undergraduates and the undergraduate programs. Because, of course if you're working at CERN on a frontier experiment you come back to give a lecture, you're buzzing with activity of what's going on your new results. It just makes the whole lecture much more interesting for students. It's always really exciting to look ahead at new science and what might happen in the future. I must say, lots depends on what we find in the next few years at the start of the Large Hadron Collider. We are expecting to find very many new phenomena. So the thing we'll want to be building in 10 years time will depend on what we find. I think it's often underestimated the connection between doing research, live research, and teaching undergraduates and the undergraduate programs. Because, of course if you're working at CERN on a frontier experiment you come back to give a lecture, you're buzzing with activity of what's going on your new results. It just makes the whole lecture much more interesting for students. It's always really exciting to look ahead at new science and what might happen in the future. I must say, lots depends on what we find in the next few years at the start of the Large Hadron Collider. We are expecting to find very many new phenomena. So the thing we'll want to be building in 10 years time will depend on what we find. Lawrence Stephen Lowy was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendlebury, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowy is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes people with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, brooding portraits, and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. Lawrence Stephen Lowy was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendlebury, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowy is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes people with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, brooding portraits, and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. Thanks to blood's ability to clot even the surface of a nasty gas just able to heal up. But platelet cells aren't sticky all the time. And now researchers have identified the key protein that makes them come together. This video shows how normal cells spread out tiny arms to catch other cells and to grasp onto the surface of a wound. When the crucial protein is absent, the cells don't stick out their arms as much and can grip the surface of an injury as tightly. Thanks to blood's ability to clot even the surface of a nasty gas just able to heal up. But platelet cells aren't sticky all the time. And now researchers have identified the key protein that makes them come together. This video shows how normal cells spread out tiny arms to catch other cells and to grasp onto the surface of a wound.
When the crucial protein is absent, the cells don't stick out their arms as much and can grip the surface of an injury as tightly. My current research at the moment is really quite broad. I work at the interface between the arts and humanities, particularly archaeology, but trying to find questions which are very difficult to answer. Unless you start integrating computing and visualizations. So really I work in this boundary between trying to understand cultural questions about the past, but those sorts of questions that you can't address, unless you start reconstructing. Start modeling and visualizing past landscapes, objects and movement of people. My current research at the moment is really quite broad. I work at the interface between the arts and humanities, particularly archaeology, but trying to find questions which are very difficult to answer. Unless you start integrating computing and visualizations. So really I work in this boundary between trying to understand cultural questions about the past, but those sorts of questions that you can't address, unless you start reconstructing. Start modeling and visualizing past landscapes, objects and movement of people. I'm a big fan of gap years. I took one myself, so I'm probably biased. I think that if you've got something you want to do in the year before you come to university, that you should do it. And a lot of students who want to study a biology degree actually want to go off and travel and perhaps work on a conservation project. And of course, that's all very good. It will contribute towards your degree and your preparation for that. And then when you come to us, you'll be ready for your studies. So if there's something you really want to do, then my advice is to go for it. I'm a big fan of gap years. I took one myself, so I'm probably biased. I think that if you've got something you want to do in the year before you come to university, that you should do it. And a lot of students who want to study a biology degree actually want to go off and travel and perhaps work on a conservation project. And of course, that's all very good. It will contribute towards your degree and your preparation for that. And then when you come to us, you'll be ready for your studies. So if there's something you really want to do, then my advice is to go for it. Okay, see, the thing is that I've had a look at the peer reviews about the funding application, which you suggested that I do. But what I found is that several reviewers are saying that there isn't actually sufficient focus on my topic. Right. I think that is actually the case, but I remember that the proposal is based around things that have already been done. And the fact that it's just one of a number of factors. And these affect health and safety. I think areas around of stress, they cover up much more ground. So I think, if you're sort of upfront about it, and you say, look, I need a wider spectrum here. We could perhaps suggest something else to try and measure bullying in the workplace. Okay, see, the thing is that I've had a look at the peer reviews about the funding application, which you suggested that I do. But what I found is that several reviewers are saying that there isn't actually sufficient focus on my topic. Right. I think that is actually the case, but I remember that the proposal is based around things that have already been done. And the fact that it's just one of a number of factors. And these affect health and safety. 
I think areas around of stress, they cover up much more ground. So I think, if you're sort of upfront about it, and you say, look, I need a wider spectrum here. We could perhaps suggest something else to try and measure bullying in the workplace. A nutrition expert at the University for What Him Unknown, say the simple sugar and candy bars can give you a quick boost. But after the initial rush, you usually crush it feel worse than before the snap. They say what you need is complex carbohydrates like a bagel or a bowl of not sugar-coating cereal. Try carrying a variety of pack size box to work with you and buying a small carton of milk from the vending machine. Carbohydrates help you sustain a blood sugar level that is neither too high nor too low. That means you have a steady flow of energy to finish your day. A nutrition expert at the University for What Him Unknown, say the simple sugar and candy bars can give you a quick boost. But after the initial rush, you usually crush it feel worse than before the snap. They say what you need is complex carbohydrates like a bagel or a bowl of not sugar-coating cereal. Try carrying a variety of pack size box to work with you and buying a small carton of milk from the vending machine. Carbohydrates help you sustain a blood sugar level that is neither too high nor too low. That means you have a steady flow of energy to finish your day. Many different types of barcode scanning machines exist, but they all work on the same fundamental principles. They all use the intensity of light reflected from a series of black and white stripes to tell the computer what code it is to see. White stripes reflect light very well, while black stripes reflect hardly any lights at all. The barcode scanners shines light sequentially across the barcode, simultaneously detecting and recording a pattern of reflected and non-reflected light. The scanner then translates this pattern into an electrical signal that the computer can understand. All scanners must include computer software to interpret the barcode once it has been entered. This simple principle has transformed the way we are able to manipulate data and the way in which many businesses handled record keeping. Many different types of barcode scanning machines exist, but they all work on the same fundamental principles. They all use the intensity of light reflected from a series of black and white stripes to tell the computer what code it is to see. White stripes reflect light very well, while black stripes reflect hardly any lights at all. The barcode scanners shines light sequentially across the barcode, simultaneously detecting and recording a pattern of reflected and non-reflected light. The scanner then translates this pattern into an electrical signal that the computer can understand. All scanners must include computer software to interpret the barcode once it has been entered. This simple principle has transformed the way we are able to manipulate data and the way in which many businesses handled record keeping. For a long time now it's been a widely accepted and rarely questioned belief that a strong corporate culture goes hand in hand with success. However, a recent study has caused some doubt of this principle. Although some of the court argue the culture a company builds up may be strong, but wrong, there is a point in every employee market to the same tune, if they are all marching in the wrong direction.
For a long time now it's been a widely accepted and rarely questioned belief that a strong corporate culture goes hand in hand with success. However, a recent study has caused some doubt of this principle. Although some of the court argue the culture a company builds up may be strong, but wrong, there is a point in every employee market to the same tune, if they are all marching in the wrong direction. Help us understand what entrepreneurship means to you. Is it just about starting companies? Not at all, Dina. I think, for me, entrepreneurship is about transforming things by initiating by taking new ideas, by seeing them from concept into practice, so that the impact of the idea is larger than it would be. Let's say, if you just wrote a publication about it. So, I think it's finding creative ways to solve problems, to do new things, and I think that's what it's about. So, I think entrepreneurship can happen inside universities, I think we try to think of ourselves as an entrepreneurial university. We take risks, we try new things, and I think that's an important asset for anyone who wants to lead an organization or lead change. Help us understand what entrepreneurship means to you. Is it just about starting companies? Not at all, Dina. I think, for me, entrepreneurship is about transforming things by initiating by taking new ideas, by seeing them from concept into practice, so that the impact of the idea is larger than it would be. Let's say, if you just wrote a publication about it. So, I think it's finding creative ways to solve problems, to do new things, and I think that's what it's about. So, I think entrepreneurship can happen inside universities, I think we try to think of ourselves as an entrepreneurial university. We take risks, we try new things, and I think that's an important asset for anyone who wants to lead an organization or lead change. Numbers and diagrams are highly abstract and condensed summaries of the world. They require a degree of mental effort to bridge the gap between them and the aspects of the real world they stand for. Approach them slowly and with care, allowing yourself time to get the feel of what you are looking at. Don't assume you already know what you are looking at. It's easy to be distracted by the surface appearance of a diagram but we are really interested in the underlying message. Numbers and diagrams are highly abstract and condensed summaries of the world. They require a degree of mental effort to bridge the gap between them and the aspects of the real world they stand for. Approach them slowly and with care, allowing yourself time to get the feel of what you are looking at. Don't assume you already know what you are looking at. It's easy to be distracted by the surface appearance of a diagram. But we are really interested in the underlying message. The Mississippi River built this area. Each year it would flood. It would bring in a lot of nutrients and a lot of sediment. And the sediment would settle over the marsh. And over time that sediment gets compacted. Imagine if you dig a hole in your yard and you put, and you have the pile of dirt next to it, and a week later that pile is going to be smaller because the dirt compacts. Well the same thing when the delta was built by the Mississippi, the delta itself compacts over time, 
and under a natural hydrology the river would bring sediments back out to those areas and deposit sediments on top of areas that are subsiding. And so we actually build land with an active delta. The Mississippi River built this area, each year it would flood, it would bring in a lot of nutrients and a lot of sediment, and the sediment would settle over the marsh, and over time that sediment gets compacted. Imagine if you dig a hole in your yard and you put, and you have the pile of dirt next to it, and a week later that pile is going to be smaller because the dirt compacts. Well the same thing when the delta was built by the Mississippi, the delta itself compacts over time and under a natural hydrology the river would bring sediments back out to those areas and deposit sediments on top of areas that are subsiding. And so we actually build land with an active delta. And one particular crop, almonds in the US and now in Australia, is transforming the world of beekeeping and of bees. What has happened is that something serendipitous came along that people found out, that doctors found out that almonds are good for you, they are actually a food that is normally considered a confection, but it's good for you. The almond board got a very aggressive promotion going on for almonds. I just heard recently, they send out sales reps to cardiologists at hospitals to promote the heart benefits of almonds, so they go right to the doctors to do this. So they leave no stone unturned in a very good promotion of almonds, and it's legitimate promotion because they are a healthy food. So what's happened is worldwide, almond sales have taken off. And one particular crop, almonds in the US and now in Australia, is transforming the world of beekeeping and of bees. What has happened is that something serendipitous came along that people found out, that doctors found out that almonds are good for you, they are actually a food that is normally considered a confection, but it's good for you. The almond board got a very aggressive promotion going on for almonds. I just heard recently, they send out sales reps to cardiologists at hospitals to promote the heart benefits of almonds, so they go right to the doctors to do this. So they leave no stone unturned in a very good promotion of almonds, and it's legitimate promotion because they are a healthy food. So what's happened is worldwide, almond sales have taken off. No one likes to be spied upon, to have their personal information stolen, or their computers hijacked to become part of what's called a botnet. Botnets are networks of computers that have been infected by viruses called malware. It could happen to you. These hijacked computers are being secretly used without the owner's permission, for criminal and espionage purposes. Botnets are one of the biggest problems in computer security today. One of the scariest examples of computer hacking, as we mentioned, is what's called the OSTnet system. The hijacking of computer networks in the offices of the Dalai Lama and thousands of other computers around the world. No one likes to be spied upon, to have their personal information stolen, or their computers hijacked to become part of what's called a botnet. Botnets are networks of computers that have been infected by viruses called malware. It could happen to you. These hijacked computers are being secretly used without the owner's permission, 
for criminal and espionage purposes. Botnets are one of the biggest problems in computer security today. One of the scariest examples of computer hacking, as we mentioned, is what's called the Ostnet system. The hijacking of computer networks in the offices of the Dalai Lama and thousands of other computers around the world. I think it's really important for young people not to feel restricted in their choices and also to be aware of the choices that are available to them and obviously the media has an incredibly important role to play in that in letting people know the great range of science that is out there and is potentially a career. I think we tend to talk about science as this big kind of monolith but of course actually it's this beautiful multifaceted thing, you know, there's almost something for everybody there. There are so many different aspects of it that really attract lots of different types of personality I think and, you know, somebody that's going to be attracted to working in biology might be a very different person from somebody who's attracted to engineering. I suppose it's about knowing the breadth of opportunities that are out there and so anything that universities and broadcast media can do to make sure that those opportunities are visible I think is really important. I think it's really important for young people not to feel restricted in their choices and also to be aware of the choices that are available to them and obviously the media has an incredibly important role to play in that in letting people know the great range of science that is out there and is potentially a career. I think we tend to talk about science as this big kind of monolith but of course actually it's this beautiful multifaceted thing, you know, there's almost something for everybody there. There are so many different aspects of it that really attract lots of different types of personality I think and, you know, somebody that's going to be attracted to working in biology might be a very different person from somebody who's attracted to engineering. I suppose it's about knowing the breadth of opportunities that are out there and so anything that universities and broadcast media can do to make sure that the